you know, I'll be honest with you, I tried really hard to find the time to produce this video, which I really wanted to make, by the way, because it's all about Wildstar, which is my favorite MMO of 2014, and it's not even out yet. And the development process for it is just amazing, and I just, that's how excited I am for this game. It's not even out. And the development is just going so well so far, for me at least. But um, somehow I did not manage to make the video during the past week, which I am sorry for, but we're finally here, you and me, to talk about Wildstar. And so I hope you're doing well on this night or on this morning, wherever you are in this planet, amazing planet of ours, which is not Nexus, sadly. Um, so today we're going to discuss the third class re-reveal from Carbine, which is the Spellslinger, the only one that uses dual mag pistols, the fabulous space cowboy that everyone absolutely loves. Um, it's probably the most popular class for a good reason, and that is because the Spellslinger, according to Carbine, is the most fun class to play. I don't know. That's how they feel. And I kind of agree, because the Spellslinger is a very mobile class that uses a lot of freeform scale shots, and we haven't seen a class that kind of does that a lot in MMOs. Um, there are mobile classes in other MMOs, like maybe the Hunter from WoW, which kites a lot, and that is what the Spellslinger does as well. But the Spellslinger also does a lot of, performs a lot of skill shots, freeform ones, which are not very heard of in the MMO atmosphere. Um, so skill shots, I can imagine how fun they must be when you can just cast them and hover uh, the skill shots over the enemies. And so having to do that all the time must be really exhilarating because instead of looking at, you know, instead of just standing there and, you know, being stationary most of the time and casting abilities without even thinking where you're standing, that's not really fun. It doesn't really motivate you to, to get into the combat, right? in an MMO. But with skill shots, it definitely gets more exciting. So with the Spell Slinger, I feel like the class is going to be very popular. I, I'm I'm thinking of rolling one personally, even though I am kind of set on the Esper, which is kind of awesome too. But let's let's actually stop going off on a tangent here and talk about the Spell Slinger. So what is the Spell Slinger. So it's a space cowboy. Um, according to the lore, Spell Slingers were very common in the world of Nexus, um, but they never used magic or temporal space to empower their bullets. And so one guy decided to change that and to actually infuse um, dual mag pistols with magic. And so before, Spell Slingers used to be concerned about running out of ammo all the time until the very recent years, um, where bullets basically got replaced by magic bullets, which are basically bullets that come from the void. Sounds amazing, right? Um, so not only do they do spell slingers now have magic bullets, they also empower the, their bullets with elemental energy. So they use the power of fire, ice, earth, water, maybe, I don't know, but mostly fire and ice to either slow enemies or burn them to death. And so that's how they they own people. They, they own enemies by using magic and bullets and magical bullets. So they don't actually use raw physical damage to kill enemies. They use spell power, which means, which can only mean one thing, spell slingers use two different attributes. They use finesse, which is necessary for their pistol skills, and insight, which is an attribute that helps the healing side of the spell slinger. So speaking of the healing side, um, the spell slinger can fulfill two roles. They can either be a ranged DPS or a healing, a ranged healer. Um, so according to Carbine, the healing side of the spell slinger is just as fun as the DPS one. So they use for healing, they also use skill shots, um, and they actually use more skill shots 
than the healing esper does because the healing esper is more of a single target focused healer whereas with the spell slinger um, you have more skill shots that are area of effect and so you have to line up your skill shots on your allies and you, and you can hit several of your allies if they happen to be standing on that same line so it's I think healing is going to be more fun with the spell slinger because you're going to you're going to be motivated to look at the actual environment instead of bars all the time, right? So with the esper you'll see less of that, but with the spell slinger you'll have to look at where you're lining up your shots and everything. And speaking of skill shots, um, it appears uh, that spell slingers have a much longer range than the esper. So the esper uses a lot of um, wide, like, area of effect burst abilities. They have a lot of abilities that take up space around them, whereas Spell Slingers use, use a lot of lined skill shots, which means that they have, um, they have area of effect skill shots that are narrower, but are also longer. So they're a little bit longer than the Esper's. I think the Esper has a max range of 35 meters, whereas the Spell Slinger has can hit enemies to up to 45 meters and they can even increase that using the amp system the tiering system which you can put points in and improve your abilities basically or your attributes or your character stats and all of that um so basically the spell slinger has lots of mobility uses temporal space and elemental energy um has great kiting potential. Uh, the Spell Slinger has frost spells to use to root and snare enemies uh, while dealing heavy damage on the move. The Spell Slinger also has better damage sustain than the Esper, and they can choose when they want to burst down an enemy using their innate ability, which I'm going to talk about right now. So the Spell Slinger has an innate ability called Spell Surge. Um, which basically empowers abilities using spell power, which is the spell slinger's resource type. And on top of that, the spell slingers have a, a secondary resource called focus, which is mana, basically, which is also used by healing espers or damage dealing espers, I believe, too. But I think, I think, uh, focus is mainly given to healers to limit their healing output. Um, so in Wildstar, by the way, healing is more about learning how to manage your resource well instead of looking at cooldowns all the time, you know, and bars. So going back to the topic of Spell Surge, Spell Surge basically empowers abilities and you can only activate it when you have spell power. So if you don't have any spell power, there is your innate ability is useless. And spell power is regenerated out of combat and during combat, but at a slower rate, I believe. Um, and what spell surge will do, not it will not only empower your abilities, but it will also lengthen their cool, uh, the CC, the CC effects they um, unleash on enemies, or the amount of damage the ability the abilities deal. Sorry. Um, so that's the spell slinger's innate ability is to use Spell Surge to empower abilities. And this is good for boss fights, especially for raid environments, because Spell Slingers can basically choose when to nuke an enemy. The Esper, however, has a lot of burst abilities, uh, but can't really control when they want to unleash their burst damage. They can do it over during most of the fight, but they can't... Um, control it. They can't control how much burst they want to do at a certain time, like the Spell Slinger does. Does, it, does that make sense to you? Hope it does. Now let's move on. Um, so the Spell Slinger has no ammo. Ammo, I mentioned it because they use magical bullets, therefore they never run out of ammo. They can shoot as many bullets as they want. Bullets don't really matter. It's all about shooting spells. So the races that are available for the Spell Slinger um, on the Axon side, we have the Human, the Mordesh, and the Orin. For the Minion, we have the Cassian, the Chua, and the Dragon. It seems like 
the human and the Cassian get to play every class, basically. Um, and that's perfectly understandable because humans and Cassians t- are the most popular of races in the world of Nexus. They're the most common and they're capable of learning virtually anything. Um, some other races are more familiar with certain classes. Orans are more of the healing type or the hippie type. They're, they like to be espers or they, they use a lot of spells. Mordash are, are kind of creepy. They're badass. They can be spell slingers too. Um, and I actually got something wrong. I think it's the Makari that can be a spell slinger and not the Draken. The Draken. Silly me. Great job, Isington. Moving on. The armor type that's used by spell slingers is light armor, meaning that you will have to stand in range with against your enemies. You can't be in melee range with them or else you'll take a lot of damage from them. Um, so you definitely want to keep a distance with them. So just like the Esper, the Spell Slinger uses light armor. The Spell Slinger uses three kinds of gear. So their main weapon is are, ba- are basically dual mag pistols, which take up to one slot item. They take up one slot, not two, but one, which means you're not gonna have to roll for the same item twice or run the same dungeon and try to get the other um, try to get another mag pistol. No, that's not going to happen. You're only going to have to roll for one item, which is going to take up one slot item in your character sheet. Um, and it's going to, it's going to look like two weapons in your hands, but it's really just one slot item. Um, the secondary weapon or, uh, thing that the spell slinger uses to fight enemies are acrobatics, which are basically CC abilities, and sigils, which are those elemental symbols which empower the shots of the guns, right? Uh, The resource type, as I mentioned it, was spell power, and the focus is the the secondary resource type. Um, So let's, let's actually discuss a little bit more in depth about the class. First of all, the spell slinger is the class that um, that a lot of players will probably play play because it's a co- it's a it's a class that's more of like I don't know it's more for those people who want to show off and like to kill with a certain flair. Um, it's it's a really fun class. Like if you look at the dev speak, you you probably will enjoy how the class fights. Just saying, the spell slinger support is more of an AoE healer, as I've said before, which is, you know, primarily focused on aimed healing abilities. Um, Spell slingers spin their guns before holstering them, and I found that really cool. So apparently, before spell slingers get into combat, they have to spin their guns, you know, like traditional cowboys do. So I found that really cool. Yeah. The range for the Spell Slinger and Esper are, again, fairly similar, but the Spell Slinger has slightly longer range, and uh, they're more specialized in doing range damage. Espers are more of like a mix. They can do, Espers can do burst damage in close combat. They can get really close to an enemy and fight them with with illusionary blades, whereas the Spell Slinger really just owns the battlefield by keeping a distance with his enemies. So let's mention a few abilities uh, for the Spell Slingers. We have 10 abilities for each each um, ability spec. So this is, this is valid for all classes, by the way. So you have a, a total of 30 abilities for each class. So we have 10 on Assault, 10 support abilities, and 10 utility abilities. I'm not going to mention all of these abilities, but here are some of the few ones that I actually liked, and I actually sp- spit on my um, microphone right now, which is kind of embarrassing, but we're going to forget about that. First ability that I really liked was called True Shot, which is a 40 meter long stationary nuke ability. Another one that I liked was Charge Shot, another stationary nuke ability uh, with a cast time. So I believe you can charge it 
to deal more damage or something along those lines. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems that way. Um, we have a damage over time ability called Ignite. It's probably a fire-based spell. We also have a finisher ability called Assassinate, which is really good for PvP. And uh, damage is increased on Assassinate when mobs or enemies are at low health. We have another cool assault ability called Magic Missiles. Kind of reminds you of the mage from WoW, right? But it's not actually the same ability. It's a channeled ability, just like the one from WoW, but has a range of 25 meters. It's a, a free form ability. It deals a certain amount of damage every 0.6 seconds, and it debuffs magic resist by 6% for 12 seconds. Let's talk about some rune, some support abilities now. Um, first one that I met, uh, that I uh, noticed during the stream was Distortion, which is a lined skill shot, which grants which grants absorption shield and interrupt armor. Vitality Burst. It's a charge release heal ability. Uh, the longer you hold it, the more healing it does. You can. You can either cast it instantly or you can charge it up to send a stronger heal. And uh, using Spell Surge will make the char charge twice as fast, so you won't have to ch charge as long as you usually do. <clears throat> Astral Inf Infusion. It heals an ally for a certain amount of health and instantly and... Oh, and, certain, and a certain amount of health every two seconds so not only is it an instant cast ability but it also um, places a healing over time spell on the player uh, it uses 48 focus it has a range of 35 meters and it's a targeted spell we have dual fire which is a cool one because it dot not only doesn't heal but it also damages at the same time we don't know how this spell exactly works but it's called dual fire and it sounds pretty cool um, and we have Sustain, another healing spell. Uh, all the other ones I don't know much about. Uh, let's move on to Utility now. First one is called Gate, uh, which is an ability that blinks the caster forward, stunning enemies in its path. So it's basically a teleport ability and an ability that you can use in PvP to stun and disorient your enemies. Um, so I really like that one. Cone of Frost deals damage and roots enemies for escape or to line up a powerful shot. So it's good for strate strategical play in PvP, um, or if you want to kite mobs, if you want to level up really quickly and kill your necessary um, mob objectives, you just gather up the enemies, use Cone Frost, and line up your powerful shot. Or if you need to just get out, or leave, or escape like this horde of mobs, just use it and you're fine. Um, we have Void Slip, which sends the user into the void for a few seconds. Now this spell is particularly interesting because it actually sends the player in like this alternate dimension. It's, it's basically the dimension of the same world, but you don't see anyone else in it. You just see yourself or... However, here's the interesting part about this spell. Other enemy spell slingers can use Void and get into the same dimension as you are in, meaning that you'll probably be targeted by those guys, right? So this is really interesting for PvP. I wonder how... Oh man, I can't wait to, to try out this class and actually try Void Slip out. Um, and what Void Slip also does, it basically removes all CC and current hostile debuffs or spells that are put on you, whether they be a damage over time spells or effects. All of those are removed once you enter the Void Slip, which you enter for a few seconds, probably five or seven at most. Um, another utility spell that we have is called Void Pact, which creates an aura around the Spell Slinger that increases his movement speed. We have Spatial Shift, an ability which swaps places between the enemy and the Spell Slinger. It is a station, sadly it's a stationary spell. Kind of hope for it to be like a, I don't know, I wish you could use it on the move, but that's not the case. Maybe it's good for dungeons for like, for solo play if you want to grind like 
if you want to find a certain weapon and use it for transmogrification pos possibly i don't know we have phase shift which increases the caster's deflect chance dramatically for a short period of time and i think that that those are pretty much all of the spells that are that i have um studied during the stream and during the ama se session by the way definitely check out the dev speak the official class page for the class the ama the ask me anything thread on reddit and as well as the twitch stream which they do basically every week however next week um, I don't think they're going to be having a stream tomorrow or after tomorrow because it's it's going to be, I think, oh, they were celebrating thanks, Thanksgiving yesterday. I'm dumb um, because we don't celebrate Thanksgiving here in Canada, at least. Um, so, yes, yesterday they were having Thanksgiving and so they weren't able to organize everything for the for this week's stream for the soccer class. So it's probably going to happen next week. But for the Spell Slinger, you can rewatch that episode um, and enjoy it, basically. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this little recap of the Spell Slinger. Make sure to stay tuned for next week's video or whenever I'll put out the video on, uh, on the Stalker. Thank you for watching it again. Thank you. Sorry, I'm stuttering. Thank you for watching this video. And I'll make... And, uh... Wow. I'm clearly tired. It's I, I don't even know. Anywho, see you later. Goodbye.